Hey everyone, today I've got a really special video. I am going to be unboxing my set of brushes that I created in collaboration with Craft Ammo. These are a limited edition set of brushes designed by me and they will be made available in a week's time. I'll share more details about that a little bit later. But just to give you a little bit of context as to how these came to be. So last year, Craft Ammo reached out to me and asked if I wanted to design a set of brushes with them. Craft Ammo is a company that creates art products that are vegan and cruelty free. So that was really important to me. And they basically gave me complete creative freedom over the design of the brushes. So I designed everything about them from the number of brushes, the types of brushes, the softness of the hairs, the lengths and widths of the hairs. So everything about the brushes was designed and decided entirely by me. And I couldn't be happier with how they turned out. I really, really love this set of brushes and I hope you'll love them as much as I do. So let me just open up this box so I can show you what I've been working on the past few months and just talk a little bit more about the brushes and why I chose them. The brushes come in this beautifully designed box. So on the cover is my artwork and you can see that it wraps around the box, which is really nice. And I'll just show you the original piece that I did. So this is the original artwork that I painted and sent over to them. I knew that um, after I designed the brushes, I knew I wanted this piece to go with it because it just had those warm colors that I thought would go well with the rose gold that I chose for the brushes. Okay, let's open it up. So when you first open it, you will see here there is a card and it's a print of my artwork and on the back, it has some care information on how to take care of your brushes, which is really good. And you can basically use this as an art print if you want to display it or put it up somewhere. So this is a really nice extra piece in there. And on the lid here, we've just kept it nice and simple. I really like the rose gold foiling once again. So here's the brushes inside the box. So you can see I chose matte gray for the handles, rose gold for the ferrule and just black hairs. So let me take them all out and I can talk about each brush in more detail. So here are the five brushes out of the box. They are all 100% synthetic. I've always enjoyed using synthetic brushes for gouache. I'll just quickly introduce all of them one by one. So here we've got a half inch flat brush with long hairs. We've got a half inch angle brush a size eight round brush and a size six round brush. And lastly, a size one liner or rigger brush. As for the softness of the hairs, four of them have the same level of softness. And one of them, the size eight round brush, this one has softer hairs. So the size eight round brush, this one mimics a synthetic screw brush. When screw brush hair is wet, um, it retains its shape more when you use it and when you press down on it instead of bouncing back to its original shape and there are a lot of benefits to this you can create a lot of textures with it and at the end of this video i will be demonstrating how to use this brush to create a lot of textures i found that softer hairs can be a little bit more difficult to get the hang of if you've never used it but once you get used to it it's very very nice to use um, whereas the other four, the usual types you would expect, they're just um, easy to control. So that was the thinking behind the softness of the hairs. So I'll go through each of the brushes and show you how I would use them and talk about why I included them in the set. So first is this half inch flat brush with long bristles. So I've always preferred using flat brushes that have longer bristles compared to the standard shorter size. And that's because the longer the hairs, the more water and paint it can hold. So it's just a lot more practical. And I typically use this kind of brush for blocking in thin layers of backgrounds and then gradually working up the opacity. I also like using this for looser paintings. So when I go out to plain air or to paint on location, I start with this brush to block in the background and the base layers and kind of shape everything out. You can do really long strokes 
and you can see the paint goes quite a long way before it starts to run out. Another great thing about it is if you hold it more vertically, you can also achieve some really thin lines. So if you want to paint some thinner lines with this, you can. It's very versatile. You can do thicker strokes and also thinner lines. Next up, we've got the half inch angle brush. If you've watched any of my videos or tutorials, you'll see that I basically use a angular shader like this for almost all of my tutorials. And again, I prefer using one that is on an angle as opposed to your typical um, short bristle flat brush. I just find it to be a little bit more versatile and more comfortable to use when you're uh, blocking in background. So this brush is pretty self-explanatory, but I'll just quickly demonstrate with it as well. So if you use it like this, you can get thin lines just like the other flat brush. And then for backgrounds, it's very easy to just block things in because it's um, on an angle. Instead of having to hold it vertically to paint, you can rest your hand more comfortably. And I love using this brush for um, blending, smooth gradients and things like that. So you'll see me use this brush in almost all my tutorials that I've done. Next up we have the size one liner or rigger brush. This one I also knew I must have in the set. So I've tried a lot of small brushes over the years and I've just found that a liner brush, so one with the really long hairs, is just the most practical for doing small details. When you use brushes that are really small or have really short hairs, even though they look like they would be great for details, there's just not enough hair to hold enough paint and water to last you long. So a rigger brush like this with longer hairs is just a lot more practical for holding a lot more water so you can um, paint many more strokes before you need to load up your brush again. And you can also use it for scratchy textures like this. I just turn it on its side. This is like a dry brush texture. So once I've used up most of the paint on the brush, if you turn it on its side, you can scrub in textures like this. Lastly, we have the two round brushes, a size eight and a size six round brush. The size eight has the softer hair and the size six has the more standard stiffness of hair. To be honest, I probably use a size eight for everything and the size six is more like a backup brush for me. Um, but I just wanted to include two because these round brushes are just so good. They come to this pointy tip. It almost feels like you don't need the liner brush if you're just doing a few thin lines. And I'll show you just how thin the lines you can get with a round brush like this. It's very, very practical. And then if you want thicker strokes, you can use it like a normal round brush. So you can use the belly of the brush to get those thicker strokes. And you can always just control the thickness of the stroke with the amount of pressure. So more pressure for thicker and less pressure for those thinner strokes. And lastly, I'm gonna show you my favorite brush out of the set, the size eight round brush and what I use it for. So this brush is just like the size six in terms of the pointed tip, but it's so much more versatile because of its soft hairs. So with the soft hairs, you can manipulate the shape of the hairs and it won't spring back to its original shape so quickly. So if you wanted to paint with more of a rounded tip, you can manipulate it like this and paint strokes that have um, more of a rounded edge to them instead of just the pointed edge. And you can also do things like pinching it at the base so that the hairs fan out and you can do stippling textures with it. You can also pinch it like this and paint on grassy strokes like that. It is just super versatile and that is why I use this brush the most when I paint. So let me demonstrate some of the most common ways that I use this brush. So one way is dry brushing like this. And with dry brushing, you want to have more paint than water on your brush. And it's also good if the paper has a little bit of tooth. So cold pressed or rough paper works well. And I would use this kind of texture when I'm painting things like clouds and also things like waterfalls. And another great thing you can do with it is to 
use the side of the brush in a dry brush texture and just go over the paper like this kind of like what we do with the rigger brush but this would cover a lot more ground I think this is called scumbling so it's just using the side of the brush kind of um, parallel to the table or your canvas and brushing on texture like this and I'll show you how I use all of these techniques in a painting demo that I'll do. So I will be doing a demo of this painting in my next video and I've basically used all of these techniques I am going to mention um, in this here. So a lot of the background in this painting, I use this scumbling technique to just um, block in large areas of texture really quickly and then for the details of the leaves and the foliage I did a stippling technique which I'll show you next so this is all very practical when it comes to doing your paintings so with the stippling technique what I love to do is just pinch the belly or pinch the base of the bristles here very close to the ferrule your fingers will get a little bit dirty with a bit of paint and you want to minimize the amount of moisture in the brush the less water there is the easier uh, the hairs can split apart like this and using it rather vertically you can just tap on your stippled texture and you might have to pinch it a few times as you go another option is to use it at more of an angle and get a different kind of texture I use this a lot when I'm painting foliage. It's just an easy way for me to cover a large area of um, foliage. So a common kind of mistake that I see when people paint foliage like this is they make everything too uniform. So right now, if you look at this patch, it's all pretty evenly spaced out and pretty uniform, which makes the leaves on the trees look fake so what you want to do instead is instead of just tapping the same way again and again you want to kind of turn your brush as you go and make clusters of things so if I concentrate a bit more leaves over here it's going to just switch things up a little and then if I just turn my brush a little I'm going to get a different shape you can kind of think of it as like a stamp tool so if you're constantly stamping the same thing again and again, it's going to look too uniform. Whereas if you just do a few simple things like just twisting the brush a little, or you just pinch the hairs again so you get a different shape, that will help you to create much more natural looking foliage that isn't just one repetitive texture. Next, I want to show you how you can get grass-like textures. So again, I'll pinch at the belly, but this time I'll keep it flat. So instead of it being round, like when I was doing the stippling, so stippling's a bit more round overall. For grassy textures, I just pinch it one way so that it's flat and you can create grassy textures like this. Again, this is so great for covering large patches of area instead of having to individually paint on each stroke of grass. So I've just demonstrated a few different ways that you can use this brush. I think it's super, super versatile and honestly just my favorite brush out of this whole set. So I hope you'll look forward to my next video where I'll be demonstrating in real time how to paint this forest scene using the brushes. And then in a week's time, that's when the brush set will officially launch and will be made available on the Craft Ammo website. I will be doing a live stream at the time of the launch so that I can answer any questions and do another demo painting with the brushes. If you want to sign up to be notified of when they are released, make sure you go to the link in the description box where you can put your email in and you'll get a email from Craft Ammo as soon as the brushes are available so you don't miss out. They are limited edition in set, so we've only made a set amount and once they sell out, that will be it. So if you are interested in getting a set, um, make sure you look out for when they drop. And lastly, thank you so much to you guys for even making this possible for me. I really, really hope you like the brushes I design. I put a lot of time and effort into thinking about the design and testing them out. And I'm truly so happy with how they turned out. And yeah, I hope you'll enjoy them. And if you buy them, then uh, we can use them together in my tutorials. Thank you for making this possible. And I will see you in my next video very soon. Bye bye.